welcome to the Hold the Line podcast, and I'm coming to you live from my office in Southern California, and I have got an amazing, incredible guest on today. I'm so excited. Uh, Mr. Ed Rush, welcome. What's up, man? Good welcome. to be here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming on here. You're just a little far south than me right now in San Diego. We, no Padres hat, I see. No, so. I know. We were just talking about that offline. So I have a, I have a, it's back there somewhere. It's just hidden in my, uh, in my studio. We were just talking about my team here, the Padres. I grew up in Philly, by the way. So I was a Phillies fan my whole life. And when the Phillies and the Padres played in the NLCS, I was wearing a Padres shirt. And I thought, I guess I'm officially now a Padres fan because I've been a Phillies fan my whole life. You but, totally um, transitioned. But yeah, so, and um, I, I just telling you, I was, so you guys know I was, I was a Marine, right? So I flew F-18s and I was in, in the Marine Corps. Uh, and, and the Marine Corps motto is like, we just run, run at the face of danger. Uh, but I have to say, Sean, I, 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 I've been watching your latest round of social media posts. And like every place in America where there's like trouble, the next hour I see you posting from there. I have no idea how you know ahead of time. But <laughs> I've never known anyone who runs into the face of spiritual danger uh, more like this guy. I'm seriously, I'm like, where it's like a where's Waldo thing, but on my Twitter account, I'm like, dudes, and the the city's burning. Like literally, the city's burning. I just found out the city the city's the Midwest is burning. Sean's out there with his guitar. I'm like, how did that even happen? So anyway, <laughs> oh man, thank you so much. Well, God is God is funny in how he orchestrates things and how he he puts us at the right moment at the right time. It's it's actually wild. I, I was thinking about it, you know, because we're actually going to be in Minnesota is our next kingdom to capital event, which just so happens to be the place where the, you know, the, uh, Tim Walsh, the, you know, the, the, the candidate for vice president with, uh, you know, Kamala Harris is from there. And so it's like, God always ordains these moments for us. I feel like a lot of it is like to bring his kingdom and his perspective, which is what I want to start off talking to you about. <laughs> Cause I know that you do have a history as an F-18 pilot, a top gun type of a guy and here's the cool thing. I had this vision from the Lord uh, when I was praying leading into 2024. And one of the words God gave me and people on here that are following this channel and are following me are well aware of this. But I, I said, I, God gave me a vision about regaining air superiority oh, and, and raising up 100,000 intercessors across America that would pray that would regain this place of air superiority because things in 2024 were going to be crazy. And I saw this. I talked about people, things being exposed. I thought it talked about economic shaking. I talked about attacks, all these kind of things. And it is like, it has gone so much wilder than I ever imagined. And the need for prayer, the need for us to come up higher to a, a, a place where we can see what God sees, pray what God prays is even more than ever, ever before. So maybe relate to us a little bit about that. What is the significance? And and you know way more than me. I just had the vision. Why is it important to gain air superiority in battle? Tell us a little bit about that, your past. Yeah. I'm excited yes. to learn. It's awesome, man. So, dude, what you just said, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not exaggerating. I'm going to unlock this in a couple different ways. But what you just said is exactly where God's heart is right now for this nation. Exactly. I'll put it to you as, as direct as this. Right on the other side of the screen is a Google Doc that I'm finalizing. I, asked, I got asked to write an op-ed for the Washington Times. And literally, the op-ed is about looking up instead of looking down. Right now, America is looking down. Uh, and a lot of God's people are, are looking down, literally trying to find out what's happening in the world through their phones. And you can ask God what's happening in the world, and he will tell you. And literally, the movement right now in the church has to be to look up, to look yeah. into Psalm 24, to see the King of Glory come in. And um, and what's happening, it's crazy, dude. In the beginning of this year, I had this image that God gave me, and it was this cart, you know, like a, one of those like old-timey carts with the horse in front and stuff. And there were supplies all on the cart. Stuff was flying off, like the liquor, like the beer ke keg went over, like there's a bunch of stuff that was flying off the cart. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden the cart found its like rut, like the the lines in the roll in the ground, and then the cart went boom, just like that. And God showed me 2023 was the year where he was throwing things off to make you lighter. And so that bumpiness really felt like felt felt just, uh, very uncomfortable, but it was God taking things off of you. And then he said, 2024 was the year you find your, your thing, your stream. And dude, this is what's happening right now. And all the things that we're seeing in the world are, 
the answers, honestly, to our prayers. God is exposing these this um, unbelievably corrupt um, uh, leadership that we have, and God's showing all everyone what's possible, and all he's doing right now is encouraging his people to look up. And your air superiority thing was right on. So we have the number one, um, the... the um, American Air Force is actually the number, the largest air force in the entire country. It just so happens that the Navy is actually the second largest air force in the whole world, right? So the Air Force, largest air force in the world. Our Navy is the second largest air force in the world. And the Marine Corps is actually the fifth largest air force in the whole world, okay? So we take, in the, in the United States, we take air superiority seriously. When we went to war in 1991, uh, it took about a day and a half until we had complete air superiority over Iraq. You cannot win a war unless you have... Uh, if you don't have that. Like, we owned the communication nodes. Anytime anyone moved, they got hit. You had people surrendering to CNN trucks because literally they couldn't get supplies uh, for 30 days. And we went back into the, in Iraq in 2003. It was the exact same thing. It's Our air superiority in, in the United States is so powerful that every single airplane, this is crazy, you'll never hear this from anyone else, uh, every airplane that was ever shot down in the last 30 years, every intelligent in, intelligence estimate we have is that not only did that enemy aircraft not know they were being shot at, they actually had no idea we were even in the air. That's how badass our, can I say that? Can I say that word? <laughs> that's how wow. awesome, uh, that's how good our pilots are. Uh, and, and every war is started that way. You have to own the air. And I think what God's showing, showing his people right now is, um, is the answers to every one of our problems happen in a direct conversation with him. Yeah. It's so important for me, dude, this is so important for me that literally four months ago, God showed me and told me to start a 24 seven prayer network. And Sean, I kid you not a week later, a week later, here we are sitting on a, a chat stream with 27 people, not 24 people, 20, uh, seven people literally praying around the clock, primarily for our nation to see revival in our nation. This is on God's heart. You nailed it, dude. You're right on. Wow, that's crazy. So, so getting back to the getting back to the air superiority thing. So, correlate a little bit about that. So, the the role of the the role, you know, your role as a pilot, I mean, is to secure the airspace and you know, going back, I think, you know, all the way back to even World War World War II, you know, we see this being a a, a moment where everything changes, where from way up here, you're seeing things that you can't see down here. You're able to communicate, like how it correlate that a little bit more to the spiritual realm. Cause I yeah, really right. want to get this. It's right. I mean, so when you have, when you talk about airplanes, right? You first, you have fighters uh, and the fighters are, are almost always out in front. And the reason the fighters yeah. are always out in front is because there's other enemy fighters that are coming to shoot your, your airplanes or the airplanes that are behind you. So fighters are designed to shoot other airplanes out of the sky. Typically they go first. Second stream of airplanes will typically be like FA. So the F-18, which I flew, is actually the F-A-18. F-A stands for fighter attack. So, so the, ne the next wave are fighters that can shoot missiles at other airplanes, but they also have bombs that can attack targets on the ground. The next wave after that are the bombers. Like we're talking about B-52s and like B-27s, B-24s back in the day. Uh, and those are the folks who are just actually going in there to just like wreak damage on communication lines, supply lines, all those, all, all the, all those kind of things. And uh, typically what happens when we go to war, and hopefully it'll be like that for a long time, is the fighters go through and everyone gets shot out of the sky, and then there's no other fighters to, for us to worry about, and then we just kind of own the sky. And when you own the sky, you can literally park overhead. You just park overhead and you can just see everything that's happening uh, right there on the ground. And by the way, there's a great, there's a great tie-in and corollary there, there into what's happening in the spiritual space, into right. the angelic space. It's yeah. crazy, man. I, I've seen... Um, it was about three weeks ago. I had a vision. I was praying, and God showed me these these like control rooms, like up in literally up in heaven. These control rooms, and each person or each mission had its own set of control rooms, and it was power. I I saw so, so I saw this. I saw the all, like high tech electronics. Think about like a missile silo kind of thing, and I saw all these missions, all these ministries, missions, people's lives, their like callings, and each person had the this heavenly control room, and into the pipes or into the control room, like the power was coming into these two pipes. The two pipes I saw in this vision that I had were one set of pipes were red. The other uh, set of pipes were blue and they were powering. And some people's control room, by the way, was like 25% powered. Some of them was hundred percent powered. Some of them like 50% powered. And some of them I saw like buddies of mine. I'm like, Oh, that's his room. And that's like the other person's room. And I asked God, what's, what are those two uh, power conduits? And he said, 
Those are obedience and prayer. And so I thought, how interesting, like literally your angelic strength is powered by prayer and obedience, you know? And I, I say obedience, I don't mean like, you know, not going to be perfect or anything like that, but a heart that's turned towards God and like what he wants to do, especially in the nation, uh, is is really powerful. And um, and yeah, that that right now is the key. And I will just tell you, like this is my mission at the moment. I'm on a mission to help transform America through this one principle, which is if every believer, literally, if you would just start your day in a 10-minute conversation with God, I mean, it doesn't even need to be long. Uh, sometimes I'll do half hour, hour, hour and a half. I call them God talks. But right now what's happening, a lot of places is like good people are rolling over and the first thing they're doing is checking their Twitter account, you know? And like, I look at Twitter too, man. I have a big account on Instagram. I follow folks. Like, I, I, I like, you know, I told you, I see, I see you all over the world <laughs> where, where you go. But but the first question, so when a bullet yeah. goes down range and the former president gets hit in the ear uh, by a would-be assassin or when a pre- presidential candidate who's president drops out of a race and then disappears for like 10 days and then someone else shows up and you're like, who is this person? Or when a new VP pick is picked and you're like, what's that guy's deal? Was he like even in combat? In that, in those moments when there's when the carts moving about and it's bouncing around, the first question actually is to go to God and go, what are you doing right now? What is happening right now in the world? What, it, what are you, what, what am I missing here? What, what's happening behind the scenes that you're doing that I don't see? Then, then go into a conversation with your online friends or your friends or whatever, like make that second. Because I will just tell you, man, I've had more revelation in the last like four or five weeks when it comes to our nation. Simply through that, like after the first debate, you all, we all watch the first, well, the only debate, I guess, <laughs> that, that we talk about it. I literally, I was in El Salvador. I literally walked out on the patio uh, after that. And I was like, Lord, what are you doing right now? And I literally, I've never felt so much excitement in heaven. I felt this overwhelming excitement, and then God started revealing, like, here's what I'm doing in the nation. I thought, that's amazing. Well, it made it easier to read Twitter the next day because I knew, already knew what God was doing. So that's your mission, man. Start with a conversation with God. You would be amazed at what he's doing in this moment and, and his place in your life, too. So how do you – let me ask you this. How do you encourage everyday Americans? And this is something that, you know, I feel like there's such a – a brainwashing effect that the media, the media is so powerful, right? I was just thinking today how in the last three and a half weeks, like we don't know, like Trump's head was almost blown off on live TV. We still don't know anything about the shooter. <laughs> the media went silent. The FBI and the, and the uh, Secret Service lied. I mean, I got my friends, senators in Congress, grilling them, like my friend Senator Josh Hawley, grilling them in congressional hearings and they're admitting the fact that they failed and da 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 da. Meanwhile, the media's moved on, right? And now we have this person that's running for president that never even got a vote ever by anyone to vote for president. And you have this constant churning of chaos, markets crashing, computer systems going out. I mean, the, it was the other day, like, uh, what, what, what was the other day that the collapse and like the airlines? I mean, you just have <laughs> constant chaos, constant dysfunction. And yet it's kind of like, I feel like people, it's almost like people have just gone numb. You know, it's like they're just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. They've just gone numb. And I've, I've noticed in person as we've, as we've gone to these capitals, like the events are getting more fiery, more urgent, more passionate. People are like desperate for God. The Lord is moving in amazing ways. But you have the majority of the nation that feels almost like they're lulled to sleep, they're disconnected, they're, they're, they, they don't even know what to think. A lot of people are just discouraged. What, what is your, how do, you, how do you give them practical wisdom and advice to unplug, come up here, you know, come up here, come up now, the revelation thing, you know, see what he sees, like you're saying, talk to God. Like, what is your, what, what is your, if you had like a, like a three minute tech talk to America, <laughs> like, what would you say? Good. I'll, I'm going to look at the clock and see if I can nail this in three minutes. So first of all, I'll just say, there's no question that we're in a battle for the soul of our nation, not just the nation, but the world. Um, we gave up a lot of ground. And when I say we, I mean like the church, we gave up a lot of ground starting in the 1970s. The church right. made a mass exodus from government, mass exodus from education, right. mass exodus from the arts. 
I mean, if you were a musician, like, you know, in the 70s and 80s, you know, you know, Petra was fine. But like, I'm just saying, like, it, it was, there was nothing, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> and so we're just seeing the results of a broken way of thinking, frankly, out of the church. We reap what we sow. So we're in a battle. But I will also tell you, 20 years from now, your kids, your grandkids are going to look at you and go, tell me what it was like in 2024, because we are in one of the most cataclysmic moments in the history right. of the world, literally. And the battle is yet to be determined. Now, <clears throat> if God's people lean into God and pray, ask him for their directions, we will win. There's no way the enemy can lose at all. In fact, I would suggest to you the enemy is actually on the run. They're being exposed um, and confused at the moment. You, you look at what's happening. If it wasn't for the mainstream media hiding everything, you would see how wild and confused uh, this, right. particular, this particular group is. And I will say this as definitively as I can. In the 70s and 80s, uh, the church made a series of decisions that led to where we're at right now. Right now, we're making a series of decisions that are going to formulate and, and factor for the next 20 or 30 years. Uh, and so very, the very, very first thing, uh, very first thing, is why I wrote the book that's sitting over my shoulder. Um, God's people, in fact, people, I don't, even, I don't even necessarily need to be God's people. I mean this. I've, I taught atheists how to hear from God, okay? If you consider yourself a Christian, that's fine. If, you're, if you just came across this podcast because you're flipping the channels, you can figure out where to go. I'm talking to you too. Very, very first step, and I mean this, is get clear between you and God who you are, and he will tell you who you are. Understand who you, what your mission is. Ask God about that. He will tell you, like, straight up. Like, if you want to know why a guy like Sean, who's so purposeful, it's because he knows who he is and what his mission is. If you want to follow someone like me, I know who I am. I know what my mission is. It makes it very easy to make my decisions uh, throughout the day. And then ask him questions about the country. How you speak into the country affects the country. So right now, a lot of really good people are like, oh, man, our country's going to hell. Like, everything's going down the tubes. Well, what you say, like, the words that you say have power. Like, when a king says something, it means something. When God says something, worlds get created. When you speak into your son or daughter's life, it changes their life. And when you speak into your country, it changes um, that. And so I always tell people, like, first, start with a single conversation with God and ask him who you are in this place. Next, ask him your mission. Next, ask him about the world. And then get to business because it's time to change the world. That's three minutes, dude. That's amazing. I, I don't do, normally do three minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. I mean, I, I feel... I feel like um, one of the things that I, I, I love watching, I, there, and, it, and it happens in the presence of God, it happens when we worship. This is why we're such a big uh, a worship ministry where we, we want to call people. It's like, get your eyes off yourself, focus up, focus higher, come up higher. It's like those who wait on the Lord will rise as, these, as wings as eagles. It's like, and every time we come up, it's like all of the heaviness and the weights and the depression and the chaos and the confusion and the, and the stuff that the, that the world and the media and stuff tries to throw on you, like it falls off. And I feel like, you know, we're in, in such a season where I don't know how people will survive without being connected to yeah. a greater reality. Because, you know, we're just in a, in a, in a place right now where... I feel like out of his kindness, God's allowing everything to be shaken. He's allowing everything to be exposed. And, you know, this could be, it's, it's, it could be a divine God setup to be one of the most amazing seasons. You know, revivals historically and awakenings like rarely, almost never happen in times of prosperity yeah. and safety. Yeah. They almost always happen in times of crisis in times where people are are desperate, and I feel like in America we're in we're we're really in one of those right now. And um, you know, my thing is here's my question: How bad does it have to get yeah. before people wake up? That's the thing that kind of shocks me. Well, I thought it was bad enough, like for <laughs> so every 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 time every month I'm like, man, this is, I thought it was going to be this like it's worse, you know. Uh, it's crazy what happened. So if you look at uh, back in 2016, I had a, guy, a prof very prophetic guy come to me and say he had a, had a vision, word from God. And what God had told him was that the enemy was using the media, primarily media, also social media, to create what he called a, um, a spirit of insanity. Literally, they were communicating. And as they were communicating, the, the minds that were listening to this were becoming so clouded that they couldn't even think. And they were actually almost becoming a little bit insane. 
And now you see some decisions that people are making and the things people are saying publicly and the stances that people are taking on some really crazy stuff, like people in bathrooms and like, like the tr trans issues and stuff. It's like unbelievable to see what people are actually saying publicly. It's crazy, but it is crazy. That's because people have literally been fed a frequency, like a actual demonic frequency that has created insanity. And if, if you listen to that long enough, that was 2016, you end up becoming debilitated at, physically and you become debilitated as culture. So it's not surprising that the world was so ripe for like a mass virus or whatever that came in 2020 because the human mind and body were literally so debilitated by this frequency that came in through media. And like you said, brainwash is a perfect, perfectly acceptable word. I think this meets, I think it meets like the scientific de definition of brainwashing. You look at what people say and how people think, and it's like completely away from any sort of reason or logic or anything like that. And God is showing us, he's so kind, like you said, God is showing us the result of a way of thinking and a way of acting. If you listen right. to the world and you listen to the world's message long enough, you will actually start to go crazy. And he's showing you like there's actually another way and there's a better way. And pe God's people are, are beginning to call out to him, which is really what revival starts with. But God's people start calling out to return, repent. And dude, I'm so into this revival thing right now. Like I said, I, I told you, we, we started this 24-hour prayer network, literally, literally with the goal of praying for revival in the nation and revival across the world. It is on, in this moment in time, I believe it's in, on God's heart. And what you see, it's really beautiful, by the way. It's really common to sort of criticize the next generation and the show, all the cr stuff that people are doing on TikTok and stuff. But you see this as well as I do, man. I do big events. I speak at speak events. You do big events. You, you, you're doing these huge events where you see people worshiping. I see people in the f 16 to 26 age bracket yeah. right there my, my kids age by the way pleading in worship with god my daughter dude my daughter just had her friends over to, to her house like all the guys and girls that she hangs out with and for two hours they sat around the the campfire pl playing their guitars and singing worship music dude these are like like i was when i was in my young 20s i was drinking a lot honestly like or if i was around a campfire i was drinking a lot you know but those kids are playing worship songs so there is something happening right now uh, and it, and they're showing us what's possible, you know. They're showing us what's possible when a heart begins to turn, and when hearts turn, nations begin to turn. I'll kind of say I'll say this, and then I'll pitch it back to you. You know, for years and years and years in the conservative movement here in the United States, especially in the religious wing of the conservative movement, the Christian Christian wing, we were so sure if if we just got the right president and we just got the right Congress and we just got the right Supreme Court, everything would change, and especially around the issue of, of like abortion. We were so sure if we just had the right people, if we just had the right people, things would change. Well, actually, things did change. Two years ago, the Dobbs decision was laid down, and it showed, or maybe it was a year ago, uh, and right. completely reversed 1972 Roe v. Wade. And not, not much happened, honestly, in the world. Um, a law changed, but the situation on the ground in terms of wh where abortions are happening and how abortions, it didn't actually change that much. Because if you want to change something, you need to change. First, people's hearts need to change. Then the laws change, right? And what happened was a law change. And I think it's a great, don't get me wrong. I think it's amazing that, 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 that law change. But what next has to happen is people's hearts have to change. And the only way for hearts to change is for God to get a hold of someone's heart and for revival. And I think we're like on its doorstep, dude. I am so, I don't know if it's next week, next month. I, I don't know. But I can, I, can, I can almost see it. It's almost like coming through the clouds. Uh, and I sense it. And man, we are praying so hard for it. And again, it simply starts with a personal revival. You can do this. If you're listening to this podcast, you don't need to find a, I mean, it would be great if you found a group of people, but you don't, you can start right now, turn your attention to God 10 minutes with your eyes closed, or even with just with a journal, start asking God questions about you, about him, about his country, about your place in it. It'll change your life. I love that. And I, I do feel like so much of that, so, so much about what, what we're talking about and in, in, in regaining air superiority and seeing things clear and coming up above uh, the chaos, so much of that comes down to just the practicing of daily talking to God and, yeah. and daily shutting out the noise. And so maybe before we end here, if you could just pray that over people, people that yeah. are out there like, man, I want to hear from God. I, I feel like I'm just yeah, desperate. I need, you know, pray over them, you know, give them some encouragement, some prayer that they can do this. They can connect with God. It's very simple. It's very easy. And more importantly, God wants to connect with them. Man, isn't that true? I'll do that. I'll do that real quick. Let me just say 15 years ago, I was a person that would, you would describe as a cessationist. I didn't believe that God spoke. I didn't believe that 
He did miracles. I've, I've seen all those things happen in my life now and like my events and stuff. So God changed my mind. Uh, and I've had people who literally said God doesn't speak. I just had this woman. I have, I have coaches and trainers around the world now with this mission, this movement of God talks. And one of my coaches told me this weekend, uh, he was at a Baptist church and there was a 75 year old woman there who said, uh, God doesn't, God doesn't speak. And if he doesn't, if he does, he doesn't speak to me. And he said, well, ask him this question. And he, he, she asked him the question. And 30 seconds later, this woman, 75 years old, she's weeping, literally weeping. And she wow. said, God just told me that he loves me and that I'm beautiful. And, um, and she said, I guess God does talk to Baptist. That's the next thing she said. I guess God does talk to Baptist. And, and I'll just tell you, I don't know where you're at in, in your life or your walk. Um, you may be walking in a, conversationally with God, seeing, seeing miracles in your life. It may be a struggle. And you may think, oh, my, you know, everybody else hears from God. I hear all these spiritual leaders and stuff tell these stories. Uh, but I don't. And that's a lie. It comes from the pit of hell, and it smells like smoke. It, it's as accessible to you as it is for a 80, 75-year-old woman in the middle of Wisconsin who's never heard from God before. It's as accessible as it is with my five-year-old. Uh, and like Sean said, God's always speaking, so he's the word. And if he's the word, you can expect that he has something to say. Uh, and so I'm going to pray for you. Lord, we just pray that you would just open the ears. In fact, they're already open. Um, that's the sense that I have from God. Pray for the person listening, Lord, that they'd connect deeply, lovingly, longingly with you, that you would give them the answers to the questions of what's happening in the world, what's happening in their life, um, what's happening in their career. Just so you know, as you're listening to this prayer, God is interested in the details of your life of your career, of your business, of your bank account, of your family, of your relationships. Sometimes we think God's only interested in the big things. You can ask him about the smallest things like literally a parking spot. And Father, we just thank you for your kindness and your goodness. We do pray for our country, Lord, that you would expose evil and pull back the veil on all the horrible things that are happening in this country, Lord, and that you would exalt your people and put your people, uh, Lord, those who love you in places of prominence and power. We thank you, Jesus. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. Thanks, That's man. amazing. We're so grateful you're on here. Hey, guys, share this. Send it out. This will be such an amazing encouragement to have an incredible man like this, a fighter pilot in the flesh, but also in the spirit, sharing with us. God bless you, Ed. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, Sean, thanks for having me on. By the way, for those of you who want, uh, the book's called God Talks. That It does walk you through a conversation with God. Uh, websites, godtalks.com. Come and say hello. I'd love to hear about you, hear about your journey, and connect a little bit. And for you, man, we need to go to a baseball game soon, so that's all. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you. Cool. Thank you so cool. much. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. Uh,